just because the players come first and um, they they can be affected by coaching changes but we do the best we can to not allow it to affect them because um, we want them to finish the season in the right way so you just try to do the best you can to make it all work uh, and keep it running but it changes very fast um, daily even if you, you're not in a court where you can really discuss the mind coordinate for you beyond the ball, did uh, West Virginia follow what you would consider to be proper protocol? Were you contacted in a good way, or, did it, or were you blindsided by it? Well, I don't really know that, uh, that that's worth, worth commenting on now. Um, and, and I guess I should have said that I'm very happy for Coach Holgerson, an opportunity to be a head football coach. And when you uh, – get the chance to be a coach at this level, I think you have to take that opportunity if that's something you desire to do. Uh, there's not a lot of them out there. And so uh, I'm very happy for him and what he was able to get uh, in that transition. Um, I have not had uh, enough communication with anybody from West Virginia to talk about. Does that bother you? Well, I don't know what practices are across the country. Um, and common courtesy from one school to another uh, doesn't really exist because there's nothing that states that it has to. Uh, so I think as head coaches, we're, we're aware of that. Um, but when, when we go through changes here, we always make the other schools aware of the information that's being passed back and forth, either by a phone call from me or a phone call from the coach that you're intending on or trying to hire to inform the people at the school that they're currently at if it's necessary. But everybody has their own way of um, um, chasing after coaches, pursuing coaches, I guess is a better term. Do you think you could get a BCS job out of here after one year? Well, nothing surprises me in this profession anymore. Um, it's sad to say, but we talk about it at times. We're almost in an entertain entertainment uh, profession now. Um, you know, and I've said this, we, we play games based on um, TV, uh, on prime time, uh, and we're in a situation where 60, 70, 80,000, 100,000 people come to watch, watch us play a game. Uh, and um, the uh, lucrative contracts that are out there now uh, at this level have magnified and have grown to, to be so big in the last few years that I don't think anything surprises me anymore. Um, but I, I do want to say that uh, there's no animosity from me toward West Virginia, and certainly not for Dana Holgerson. I'm very excited. Every, any coach that's on our staff that gets an opportunity to be a head coach, um, more power to them. I mean, that's, that's a goal that they, um, that they try to achieve, and I'm, I'm happy for them. Does any and all possibility exist in terms of what you what direction you might go though ultimately? I don't have to move very fast. I have some time, and so um, <clears throat> I I don't want to move fast because I want to be able to think it through and make the best decision for the players. Does that mean maybe having guys co do it or one central figure again or just whatever? I just can't give you an answer. It wouldn't be fair. Um, I think about it a little bit each day, but because I, I have the time, uh, then I want to make sure that it's best for the players that we have on our team, and then um, pursue whoever that may be, and then handle it the right way when I'm doing it. And I, I really don't think um, before a bowl game is the right time to do it for Oklahoma State or whoever that may be. And there will be coaches that are out there that are participating in a bowl game. And so um, out of respect to them, I would try not to disrupt their routine in preparing for that bowl game. Mike, do you want to keep the same general offensive philosophy that Dana installed? Is that your As of now, yes. But you're open to – I mean, last year you, you made a change. You're open to making a change if, if it's – yeah. Like? My goal is to is to try to make the smoothest transition with the players that we have that are returning for next year. And um, <clears throat> then you have to f try to find who's the best coach out there for Oklahoma State University. You have to tie it all in together. 
So I don't think there's any guarantees that you can you can look the same as you did last year. But uh, I do like the system that we have in place right now. And my first choice would be to pursue a coach who could come in and make the transition very smooth. The decision to, for him to continue to coach for the Alamo Bowl, was that yours, his, or a joint decision, or how did that work? Both of us. Uh, when we've had um, other assistant coaches leave to be head coaches, I, my opinion is always best for them to move on because there's no way they can think about what's going on in Oklahoma State if they're in, t in charge of the entire uh, uh, university's team or university had the entire football program. But um, obviously, uh, Coach Holgerson is going to be the coordinator for a year. So uh, he and I sat down, and we felt like that it was best for him to finish this season through the bowl game. Can you explain, Mike, the scenario a couple of years ago with Zach that you wanted to keep that continuity? You wanted him not to have to learn another offense and, and the rest of the guys around him who were older. You kind of have that situation coming back next year. So is that what you're kind of alluding to? This is a similar situation. And with Brandon being a senior, Justin, whether you know his decision, how he makes that, and the rest of these guys, that's the important thing for the players, the continuity part of it? Yes, but you also have to find the right guy. Um, I would like to find the person who fits our staff and what we try to accomplish here and what our thought process is, but then also try to make it a smooth transition for the players. Mike, is one of your requirements that whoever the coordinator is, he has to be older than your quarterback? <laughs> well, I hadn't thought about that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't know that there's anybody out there that's uh, that uh, that's in that position that's younger than him. Yes, there is. There is. <laughs> Who's that? Lincoln Riley, East Carolina. Oh, I, I didn't. I don't know Lincoln. I, I didn't know his age, but um, at, I guess. you know, there's a few guys that are still playing the big leagues that are older than their managers. So, <laughs> I hadn't thought about it. Robert talked about what's going on at Arizona and Mike Stoops have to find replacements. You don't have to do that right now. Just talk about the advantages of having Dana in place through the bowl game. Well, I think it's um, I think it's good for, for Coach Holgerson to be here to finish, and I think it's good for our players. And uh, when you go through a transition like this, sometimes it works out that way and sometimes it doesn't. You don't you don't know really what what to expect. Uh, and uh, Coach Holgerson will, will be in here later on today, and I'll sit down and visit with him again. I don't know if anything's changed from now or two days ago when I talked to him until now, uh, but, but I'll visit with him a little bit later today to just kind of make sure we're on the same page. Uh, it, it's important that he doesn't have commitments with West Virginia um, that would distract what we're going through here in our preparation. If not, then he's the best guy for for Oklahoma State and to coach in the bowl game. But if he has commitments that are going to pull him away throughout the next 10 days, two weeks, well, then it's, he's not the best guy for Oklahoma State. So you got to kind of sit down and work it all out. You have three practices with the group where you're going to cut them loose, let them go home. You've always been able to read your guys pretty good. And I know today may be the best day to read since they'll be completely <clears throat> done with finals. What's the read emotionally, mentally, and, and attitude is the importance of this bowl game for this football team? Well, it's been very good. I think they're eager to play another game. Now, I haven't seen them in two days because it's finals week. And obviously, uh, this uh, uh, situation with, with Coach Holgerson just happened. And, and, we're, and we'll, we'll meet with them this afternoon and practice today. But I would expect that they're mature enough to understand what's transpired. Uh, I think the players realize that well, there was a coach on the staff that had an opportunity to be a head coach. and. Uh, I mean, that's going to happen almost every time. If, if he has a chance to be a head coach, they're going to take it. So I think they understand that. Even beyond that situation, though, just their eagerness, like you said, to play one more game, to get the 11th win, you know, they, they all season long, they've been all about playing. Well, they're, they enjoy being around each other. They still goof around in the locker room and in the training room and at the, out there at the practice field. And that's why they won 10 games, because – they don't look at it as, as a job and as a headache to be out there and, and practice. They enjoy being around each other. So I wouldn't expect that to change any at all. Do you see any big in last year's 
last year's team kind of headed into the cotton with the players and maybe the coaches? How are you guys preparing different than this year? Well, our preparation hasn't changed this week compared to any other week. Um, we practiced about the n uh, same number of times, and um, it's very similar to what it was last year, which is the same as the last four years in our bowl preparation. Did you have to well, Kendall has a lot of emotions that don't really come out in him uh, just because he doesn't talk very much. But Kendall loves Oklahoma State. And I think he was emotional because he had such a difficult year last year with all the notoriety he had received two years ago. And I think there's some relief at times. There's a lot of pressure involved in college football players that are expected to perform at a high level. There's an enormous amount of pressure on those guys. And I think at times, once you satisfy that goal, once you once he's um, somewhat finished the season and had a, a really good year, I think there's a, there's some relief there, so so he can uh, you know obviously play in a bowl game and then and then move on and with his career. But there's a lot of pressure on these guys at, at times that not very many of us know. Uh, they they keep it inside. Well, it's hard to predict what round, but he'll he'll go pretty high. Would be my guess. Uh, he's been durable. Uh, he's smart. He can catch the ball. He's elusive. Uh, he's got a great temperament, and uh, everything off the field from him is an A plus. He falls into the Russell Okun category. He never shows up on any list. Does everything the right way, and he likes to play the game. You know, one thing you notice or I notice about Kendall is we come out and practice in bowl week and it's cold. We practiced the other day, it's like wind chill, 25 degrees. And he just has the same stuff on, doesn't even have sleeves or anything on. And uh, that doesn't make, make you a good player, but he just goes out and practices, never says a word.